Hello everyone, in this video I want to talk about the decision between buying the Xbox Series X or the PlayStation 5. Now, let me give you an update on my situation. Uh, for those of you who already decided and you think the decisions are very easy, well, probably this video is not for you. Now, I'm still confused. And the funny thing is that the more I read, the more comparison I read, the more articles I read about the specifications and comparison articles and videos, uh, well, the more I get confused. So maybe this video might confuse you even more, or maybe not. So the thing is, when it comes to uh, hardware performance, uh, I stopped thinking about this a long time ago. I think both will perform well, and often seeing uh, um, Unreal Engine 5 demos and seeing what is possible real time on the PlayStation 5, and even if the Xbox Series X is too marginally uh, more powerful still, I believe that both consoles will be able to deliver games, especially with this type of uh, game engine, games that look very, very realistic. We are very close to achieving uh, photorealism that is undistinguishable uh, between uh, real life and uh, computer graphics. Now the same goes to the SSD. I've seen the loading times on the Xbox Series X um, uh, performance and you can find it by the way you can google it and search youtube you can find uh various uh, load times demos that compare the loading times between the xbox one uh x and even the xbox series x and you can see the difference the xbox series x ssd is much speedier and the loading times are significantly reduced so again this is something that i really i'm not diving deep deep details and I don't care like if there's kind of marginal difference both will perform well and load games really fast. So if in terms of performance I see them both of them as kind of equal not that they are equal but you know they perform well both of them well, what's left exactly? Well in terms of design I drop this as well maybe you want to see something related to thermal performance that one might be better than the other but I think again that both companies put effort to make sure that both consoles will perform well. So this is not something that I think about either. So again, you probably said to yourself, okay, so you don't care about the hardware. Well, in most part, I think that both of them are good and I really don't think about, yeah, I don't think about whether this one has a better SSD or, or slightly better um, graphic performance. So what do you care about? Well, what we are left with? Well, software and external hardware. Now, this is important. So the things that I care about most right now is backwards compatibility, uh, games, and when I say games, I'm talking about uh, uh, game selection, subscription service, um, and also uh, exclusive games for each platform. And by the way, when we talk about uh, 3D audio, which is something related to the hardware and software as well, um, this is something I need to try out because uh, you know I can read about it and I know that both of them had 3D audio support, uh, but this is something I need to try it myself to really understand whether there's a big difference between the two or not. And this probably will be related to specific games. So again, in that aspect, I really don't care either. I think both will support, I know that both, both will support 3D audio. So again, it's not something that kind of uh, on the table right now. And the other thing that I mentioned is accessories. So again, this comes to, uh, the controller, of course, which there is a difference between the two. Um, and other peripherals when it comes to external uh, hard drives, so external SSD that extend uh, the storage space of the console. And by the way, this is also related to the storage space. Um, and the difference between, for me, the difference between uh, 825 gigabytes on the PlayStation 5 compared to one terabyte one terabyte on the Xbox Series X. Again, this is not something big different that I see as a big difference and not something that will make me buy one console over the other. So the things that I'm looking at right now is backwards compatibility, um, subscription service, uh, game selection and exclusives, and the controller. Now I'm going to talk about each one, but just keep in mind that I'm not saying there aren't other differences and some things that might you think that are more important. I'm just saying this in my own perspective and things that are matter to me the most. Uh, and you might relate to this and might not. Now we start with the controller, the PlayStation 5 DualSense controller looks more interesting uh, compared to the more conservative approach that Microsoft took with its 
controller um, the PlayStation 5 looks very interesting controller looks very interesting with adaptive triggers and advanced haptic feedback it looks that really Sony really wanted to uh, you know take the controller and push it forward adding new technologies uh, to enhance the gameplay experience make games more immersive to play uh, so we have kind of more tactile feedback and because I love playing first person shooters I think this is something that can be very interesting if the developer decide to uh, use the API to really talk with the controller and kind of take use of the technology to make uh, shooting with different weapons uh, feel different uh, so for example we already heard about for example when you shoot with a shotgun you can make that uh, if you only press half the way uh, with the adaptive triggers you can shoot one bullet if you put it through you can shoot two bullets you can control uh, the tension of the uh, buttons and overall if you play with certain guns you're gonna feel it differently I mean physically feel the difference and again, when I think about it, I think that if it's implemented well in a game, this can really make a big difference for certain type of uh, games. So something that I was really looking forward to, and this for me makes a difference here. Now the next thing is backwards compatibility. I know that for many of you, this is a very, very important thing, uh, especially if you already own many games, you still want to continue playing instead of just teaching all the previous game that you already invested in. Of course, if you already invested, I mean, uh, you don't plan to play them, well, what's the point, right? But if you, there are many games you still want to continue playing, uh, this is something that uh, should be important for you. Uh, some players don't even care about this. They only buy next-gen consoles to play next-gen games. They don't even care about previous games. So again, this is something very individual. So for me, well, I don't care. I'm really looking forward to play next. I don't even have time to uh, play so many next gen games, let alone even current gen games on the PC. And there are so many of them, let alone play previous gen games. Uh, but maybe we'll see. But overall, it's not something that is on top of my list. Uh, but it's important to uh, acknowledge that uh, this is something to consider. It's important. Um, and in that aspect, the Xbox is acts as an advantage. Uh, as you can, it supports uh, games for previous generations. Whether the PlayStation 5 will support uh, only a majority of um, PlayStation 4 games, but you won't get support for PlayStation 3, no PlayStation 2, nor the first PlayStation games. Uh, well, it won't support this, and this is official, by the way. Now, the next thing that is important for me is subscription service again but before we talk about subscription service as you can see right now the playstation actually get one point for the controller for me yeah i'm only talking my own opinion so uh backwards, backwards compatibility for me it's not important if for you you're going to give it a point for me it doesn't matter so right now the playstation 5 is a point one point for the controller so again we talk about subscription service now, I'm an Xbox Game Pass subscription, uh, subscriber, and I'm really happy with what Microsoft put here. There are tons of games that I'm able to play, the price, the price is great, and if I'm looking uh, to uh, the Xbox Series X um, uh, console, uh, I can definitely see that Microsoft will have advantage here for me, uh, especially if I buy games on the PC, I can continue playing on the console. Um, there are also going to be uh, many um, AAA games, uh, first party AAA games for Microsoft Studios, game studios that will be available as part of the Xbox Game Pass. For example, Halo Infinite will be one of them, of course. And what this means, this means it's going to save me a lot of money. So not just I'm going to have through this subscription service games, uh, high quality AAA games, uh, I'm going to have many other indie games available and the thing is, based on what I've seen, uh, Microsoft really try to uh, kind of put different type of genres, interesting genres, and actually most of the games that actually come to the subscription service, the Xbox Game Pass, there are many games that I enjoy playing. Now when I try to see on the PlayStation Now, well I wasn't that uh, impressed at all. So I told myself, alright, because Sony is focusing on its exclusives and you won't see many triple a games of being offered as part of the playstation now at least we can expect them not to be and now if you look at what the playstation now is to offer again i don't expect 
uh, AAA games uh, to uh, be available, uh, exclusive games to be available on the PlayStation Now on the first day they are released to the PlayStation 5 console. So again, this is a big money saver, especially if you have the games that you enjoy playing. So in that aspect, uh, I think not just I'm going to save a lot of money, uh, I'm going to have even more games to play on the Xbox Series X. Now I'm generalizing here and maybe when we get to the point where more games are revealed, maybe this is going to change. But overall, this seems kind to be the landscape of the games and um, we're going to talk about exclusive games. So when it comes to exclusive games, I think the PlayStation 5 will have the advantage. I think that Sony uh, will have to focus on bringing uh, many great exclusive games to its console because it's focusing on these exclusive games, less on the subscription service compared to Microsoft with the Xbox Game Pass. Oh, and by the way, it's important that when you talk about exclusive game for the Xbox Series X, most of them, if not all of them, will be available on PC as well. So again, this is something you need to, you know, think about for yourself because if you already own uh, a gaming laptop, um, you probably will be able to play all those games. You don't need actually an Xbox Series X for that. Uh, but for me, for example, because I have, uh, you know, a laptop with 1660 GTX Ti and I want to play, you know, games at high setting, 4K and with ray tracing, you know, not all of this together, or maybe, yeah, depends on the game. Uh, I need an Xbox Series X to do that. Now, the other thing that to look is the previous um, games, exclusive games that I know that already released for the PlayStation uh, 4, and we can expect them to be released uh, on the PlayStation 5. And also, we know the game studios. What game studios out there, what games they are releasing, which one actually releases games that I enjoy playing. And when I look at this, again, here, for me, Sony definitely has an advantage. I mean, the PlayStation 5. Now, having said of that, the, uh, the other thing is that even though the PlayStation 5 might have more exclusive game to play, we need to understand that some of the games are going to finish, I don't know, like in a week, for example, Wait, one game I'm going to finish in a week. What I'm going to do until then, right? Uh, so again, it really depends on the titles. I'm actually looking for titles that I can invest in, like Destiny 2, for example. Not, I mean, not saying about exclusive, just in general playing a game that you know kind of have a long life like even one two or even more years so you can actually play it for a long time uh, that I enjoy playing and if it's a good exclusive this is something that really good I'm gonna give it a lot of weight but if you finish an exclusive you're gonna play other games and that actually is something that I'm considering that's why the subscription service is so important alongside saving money uh, so again, when I combine the two, that's why Xbox Series X feels like uh, a good choice, very good choice. So I kind of ask myself, all right, will I be able to just give up on certain games that I know they are, I know that they are going to be released for the PlayStation 5? For example, let's say Bloodborne 2, if Bloodborne 2 is coming, whether I'll be able to just, you know, just think about the uh, a reality where I won't be able to play it. Uh, well, this is something I need to do with myself and you need to do this for other exclusive games that you know that I'm going to be released for each console. Because I don't want to be in a moment where I bought one console uh, I'm going to be kind of in a situation when I tell myself I want to play this game so much but I can't. I only I already own one console if I want for example to play Bloodborne 2 and it's released and it looks absolutely amazing I'm gonna feel so bad so I need to ask myself you know what type of exclusive I just can't give up knowing that I won't be able to play them and as I mentioned the PlayStation 4 is so many amazing exclusive and we can expect uh, some of the exclusive to continue I uh, have a sequel on the PlayStation 5 and this include The Last of Us, uh, by the way, Richard and Clack, where you know it's coming, and I love Richard and Clack, uh, Bloodborne, uh, and you know, many others. And you know, you just need to beat yourself, do this kind of calculation, see which games you just can live without, let's say it like that. And when I think about it, uh, you know, that's when uh, the PlayStation 5 uh, feels like a better uh, buy for me because. Of the great games uh, exclusive games that I know that they can only play on the PlayStation 5 or on the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 5 but again Sony exclusive that won't be available uh, for either PC or Xbox Series X 
Now the last thing I even mentioned this before is something related to price and you can actually I can actually save money $100 when I go to the with the digital edition although I actually compare this and actually this might not be the complete truth because you're probably going to find some discs uh, maybe on secondhand stores uh, and some sales and you can actually save money you can even sell the discs uh, for or give it uh, rent it or give it to a friend you know there are many advantages of actually owning a console with this compared to not having this uh, but you can save it uh, $100 uh, uh, if you decide to go with the digital edition but again having the option is what's important right it's not actually you do your own comparison which one is better for you but at least you have the option whether with the xbox series x uh, i don't have this option now of course we also need to consider the fact that there are going to be many indie games and both subscription services will offer them to play them uh, so it's not like playstation now won't have you know many games there but as of the time being um I found uh, Xbox Series, uh, sorry, Xbox Game Pass to be uh, better overall. And uh, yeah, a question that I'm asking myself, taking all this into consideration, which one is better for me? And when I kind of sum everything, this is where the PlayStation 5 actually come on top. And the thing is that I'm trying to think, uh, you know, kind of a, on the surface, more simple thinking, instead of going all the fine details because the, as I told you, the more the down I get with all the details, the harder for me is making the decision. And actually, when I dub, dive deep into the details, I found that the difference there are not that actually that important. And the things that are more important, are actually, the things that you know, kind of on the surface, what games, the subscription service, uh, you know, the accessories, etc. Now, I'm not saying that at some point you won't find things that you know uh, one console is really. Uh, uh, kind of a win against the other one in terms of certain more specific things like when it comes to the speed of the SSD or you know, maybe the Xbox Series X when you see devs kind of squeezing out uh, more of its power and delivering kind of even prettier visuals compared to um, uh, the PlayStation 5s for games that are released on both uh, consoles I don't know this and we need to wait and see but overall I'm summarizing everything for myself and you know when I do this and I do this quite a lot especially with myself kind of thinking scratching my head trying to find you know pros and cons and you know the thing is that I can only buy one right you probably you know, some of you don't have this issue you're just gonna buy both of them or maybe you just own a high-end PC and you don't really care you just go and buy the 3080 Nvidia card and just forget about all this uh, you know, you don't need even to talk about the Xbox Series X because it's, you know, now that you have the NVIDIA card, that uh, the 3080, for example, which is not too expensive, right? Uh, and you can really enjoy uh, ray tracing, high frame rates, 4K, everything. I don't think even 8K. You really don't care about this. But this is for, you know, people who are kind of uh, have the only option is to just buy a single console. And it's very hard for them to decide. And... They are not kind of a fanboys for you know for any company i'm not a fanboy of no sony nor um microsoft i just going to buy the console that i think that i will enjoy the most now the last thing that is still on my mind i haven't mentioned it just yet but it's still related to accessories and i'm going to bring it up because i still think it's important is virtual reality all right uh this is kind of uh, the last thing and uh again this is i really want to jump into virtual reality um, but in some ways I th was thinking about getting the Oculus Quest 2 uh, uh, but again I'm not sure uh, which one but again if I want to jump into VR with PlayStation 5 well, we have this built in and I do expect uh, a next version of the PlayStation VR to be released will be much even much better and considering this is even more powerful console we expect games to be even more immersive uh, than before compared to the PlayStation 4. So this is another advantage. This is another medium come built into the console itself. Uh, and if you haven't tried virtual reality yet, uh, maybe you should. Maybe you're gonna find that you really want to experience those games. And considering the fact that there are already so many games that already released for the PlayStation 4, they will be available at a much lower price right now. So this is very, maybe they will be available part of the PlayStation Now uh, 
subscription service for a very very low price even for free if you have if you are a subscriber so as you can see decisions are not easy uh, but again i didn't want to dive into very very fine details here uh, many do but again i told you i just get confused from it and it really i didn't find anything that you're gonna you're gonna say oh my god this is a kind of a killer feature you know that just takes everything and make one console win over the other uh, so I just dropped the things that I don't think they are important for my buying decision and try to focus on the things that I know that are very important for me and make the decision from there. Now, as I said, this is very personal individual. You might find things that I said are important. You think they are not important for you at all. So you are going to make your own decision. But overall, summarizing everything uh, and based on the things that I mentioned here for myself, I think that the PlayStation 5 have an advantage. And if you feel kind of uh, uh, related to what I said, well, probably the PlayStation 5 uh, will be the console for you. Or if you don't, and you find things that actually in favor in that aspect of the things that I've mentioned here uh, that are in favor of the Xbox Series X, maybe the Xbox Series X will be uh, the console for you. So again, uh, tell me what you think in the comment section below. Uh, again, I'm still making a decision and it's okay, we still have time, uh, but which one you prefer? Again, based on the reason that I mentioned here, again, but of course you can mention other things, or maybe I miss something that is very important, let me know in the comment section below. So again, thanks for watching everyone, I know it was long, but I really wanted to kind of share things and talk about each one, uh, and I want, really want to hear your opinion. So again, waiting for you in the comment section below, let's discuss it. And I see you in the next video. Consider subscribing to my channel and giving a like if you enjoyed or find it useful. I see you on the next video. Stay safe, everyone. Cheers.